outside of Capcom's Holy Trinity and the previously reviewed Gourmet Sentai Barriado, Ghost Chaser Densei is another among the great undiscovered beat-em-ups on the SNES. Ported from the arcade by the developers themselves, Winkysoft, and published by Bandai for the Super Famicom in 1994, this game unfortunately never escaped the shores of Japan. Ghost Chaser Densei's story is, well, all you really need to know is that you're the future police and you're here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, but you're all out of gum. And at your disposal are your common beat-em-up archetypes. Mikai is your even character, Io is your weaker but faster character who also appears to be a Thundercat, and Robocop is your heavy. Now that's what I call a lineup. A badass, a Thundercat, and a Robocop? Look out Ninja Warriors, there's some competition in town. Controls are perfect. Movement is fluid and well paced, and action and combat are delectably hellacious. Characters yield a decent arsenal of attacks, like the always reliable punch and jump kick, but unlike most of its contemporaries, this game realizes how important it is to have a wide variety of moves. So jumping and pressing down will switch up your jump kick, pressing different directions while throwing will allow you to not only flip a foe but also knock some skulls, and grabbing someone and pressing B will do a third throw. Going toe to toe with dominatrixes, throwing rowdy reptiles at one another, and sending the stereotypical athletic fat dude that's in every beat em up to the floor is satisfying in that way that just makes you feel like a badass. And never once in any of my playthroughs did a death feel cheap at the expense of the controls. However, I can't say the same about enemy spawns in later levels, as you're tasked with fighting a bit more baddies than you can reasonably handle. Of course, this is typical of the genre, but thankfully Ghost Chaser Densei implements a few smart changes that really help level the playing field. Underneath your health, you'll notice a red bar. This is for specials. Gone are the days of having to waste precious health when surrounded by hordes of foes. Instead, build your special meter and press B and Y to save yourself, or string together a fury of specials best done by jumping, holding down B, and tapping Y to fall an enemy in one big combo. Sure, you lose the risk or reward factor of using health, but I feel trading that in with a more skill-centered mechanic is far better, and I wish more beat-em-ups of the era adopted this. Once your meter is depleted, simply standing still will quickly replenish it. Another neat detail that more brawlers should include is the expanding health and special meter. As you play the game, both meters slowly increase in size with experience, which keeps the game fairer in the latter half. The game's flow is dangerously good for those first few levels as you spend just the right amount of time bagging baddies and soaring through stages. But it does take a small nosedive after level 3 with the abundance of the aforementioned enemy hordes that slow down the late game. On the topic of problems, I must admit that the graphics are a weak point in this game. They aren't bad, but take a look at what Capcom was doing at the time, then look back at this and you can tell it isn't quite up to snuff. It really shows in the later levels when the semi-vibrant color palette starts fading to duller shades. That being said, there is still a bit to gawk at here and there like that final boss battle. Despite the lack in color palette, the stages themselves are pretty fun with a few cool scenes like the moving platform section and the eye-popping first level full of carnage. Of course, I can't go without mentioning some of the bosses as well. The first stage ends with you fighting an N209 and later on you even have to take on Aquaman. Now that's awesome. Surprisingly, weapons are few and far between in this game, but when they do show up, it's worth the wait. You can get your hands on a lightsaber and cut down foes, or even a gun that will wreck waves of enemies. All in all, Ghost Chaser Densei is not a game to pass up. It's chock full of action, battles, and rocking tunes. Not to mention what other game allows you to jump out a window and into your flying car. Of course, bringing along a second player only adds to the fun and definitely makes this a better experience, but single player isn't bad either. The game's also not too difficult. In my first playthrough, I managed to get to the fourth stage before biting the dust once, so expect to see this one to the end without much hassle. The true hassle is forking over the ridiculous amounts of money and official copy commands. But if you want to save your bank account, don't be afraid to snag a reproduction or the fan-translated ROM off the interwebs. I guess I'll have to save this one's quarter-munching sequel for another time, so I'll be sure to see you then. If you liked this review, be sure to check out my channel where I tackle tons of Super Famicom games and other imports worth your time. And a big thank you to Jim for having me on the channel and supporting me. It truly means a lot.